Tabloid, the word,、mm-hmm. means a newspaper with pages half the side or size. <laughs> sure. Maybe the sides are half. The size. Sure, on, right. On each side. Yeah, right. So I don't see a problem. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> of a standard newspaper, generally called a broadsheet. Okay. All right.、Um... It also means sensational in a lurid or vulgar way. Yeah,、uh, that's what I've come to know it as. And you, you call、know? it something like the Daily Mail. Well, there's、yeah. nothing wrong with that. Right. I get mail every day. That sounds great. <laughs> some correspondence, some Bed Bath and Beyond coupons. Right. But not so fast. No. Sometimes there's lurid, vulgar stories. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Jennifer Lawrence is going to play Sue Storm in the upcoming Fantastic Four film. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know how that's so. I want to order vulgar. Well, no, but it, but I guess because of the the, the source, where <laughs> we we question its validity. The source is fantastic. Yeah, right. I don't think this is going to happen. Why not? Because I don't know. I can't track the Daily Mail's,、um, you know, accuracy. What they're batting in、With、terms、casting. of predicting casting news,、yeah. but you know they. It's pretty bad. Their average is pretty low, predicting、okay. other things. You、okay. know, they are a tabloid in the subjective sense of the term, right? As well as being one in the objective sense of the term. Uh huh. Smaller than a broadsheet, right? <laughs> so I don't, I don't. I think this is just noise. I think somebody decided that they had,、um, you know, we don't have enough buzz in the in the entertainment news. So come on, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Fantastic Four. Blonde, blonde. Who's blonde? Yeah, right. Exactly.、Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Dolly Parton. Yeah, yeah, right. Dolly Parton. No, no, I like yours. <laughs> And that's what we got. Yeah, right. So I'm assuming, you know, just as in our duty as journalists or commentators, yeah, I'm assuming、uh, this is not true. Okay. How would you feel if it was true? <laughs> I had to ask. I was just about to say that, but since we co-host this show, sometimes we have little things like that. You're in a hurry, huh? You want to get this over with? Kind of. You sit I mean, down on a nice no, five course I, meal. I shouldn't say that. And you're in between the third and the and the fourth course. You know they're going to bring out the piece de la resistance、mm-hmm. thing. They they take the plates away. They give you new plates. Right. Set the silverware up and everything. They get that little thing. That little、uh, the little scraper. crumb scraper out. You know、yeah. it doesn't scrape. That's too elegant. Right. So it takes takes that out. While as、right. they're doing that and they bring the the dish out. You know and it's got the. The the it's under glass. It's got a、sure. thing on it there. Right.、And、they set it down. They're about to pull off. You go. I want to eat already. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Well then, tell me. Okay. I I mean I've been to. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I was at a restaurant. No no once. no. We're going to talk about Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. Now we're talking about restaurants. I was at a restaurant.、Nope. What what? I'm suffering for my sins. Go ahead. I was at a restaurant once. And like I think that they the, they didn't have a whole lot of people in, and they they had this. Give me the bill, come on! Yeah, they had this server just stand in, in by our table, and I swear he got bored and just changed out the silverware. We hadn't even eaten a course yet, <laughs> and it was just like the most awkward, strange experience, you know? Because it was like, why is this happening? But it didn't feel like we could ask that, and it was just like, okay. How? Let me ask you first. Oh my god! How you feel about it? Where's the ballet? Come on. <laughs> um, I have some. I guess I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, she's, uh, she she's she's a decent actress. <laughs> um, I didn't want to talk about Jennifer Lawrence. I want to talk about who we want to see as the first family of Marvel Comics. Yeah. Who? <laughs> I mean, who would you? I feel like you are more familiar. I don't with know. I don't think that. But you know, no. Come on, everybody knows. That's、I、why know. they they work so well. Everybody knows who they are. Yeah. I don't think that everybody won't shut up about the、uh, John Krasinski Emily Blunt、oh, thing. Oh gosh, I know. And Marvel doesn't generally listen to the internet.、No. I don't think so. I'm not really、so. worried about that happening. No, I'm not either. I'm kind of. What's Pedro Pascal up to? <laughs> <laughs> how many how many checks can he get from Marvel? I know, right?、Um, yeah, I don't know. I have to see some headshots. It's yeah, right. Let's get some unknowns in there. Let's do it. Like maybe have like maybe like one of the four be somebody who is well known or something like that. Oh, I don't you're know. Just kind of hanging on. 
one person? Well, I'm not necessarily like have some great up and comings who haven't really gotten a chance or something like that. Speaking um, of up and comings, did you hear about who's going to play Supergirl? No, I did not. Who's going to play Supergirl? They've cast Supergirl for um, the Flash movie. Which oh, I did. I think I did see actually, something. Actually, about actually that. some movement on this now. Okay. ironically, and yeah, yeah huh. um, actress Sa- Sasha Call, who is a uh, singer and an actress, okay. um, is going to play Supergirl in this film. Okay. I just I assume it's going to be like a, a cameo type thing. I assume. Um, and she's been on The Young and the Restless and not much else. Okay. Well, she is a relative unknown. That's that's okay. You know, a lot of um, she actors is... came from soap operas originally. So I don't think that that's anything to hold against her by any means. Any good ones? <laughs> Yes. Um, and Hesh, of course, I'm right. Uh, it's caused a bit of a stir, but okay. not much because she had like, I think maybe 15,000 followers on Twitter before mm. this announcement. Okay. And the announcement was cute. Um, Andy Muschietti, the director of the film, um, recorded, I hope he got her permission, uh, recorded a I Zoom would. call I hope so. uh, where he called her up. It was like, hey, what's going on? Um, you know, we're, we're talking about stuff. We're working on things. And, uh, and then he basically revealed he got the suit and he's like, you know, how do you think you'd look in this? You know, like it's, you're going to be Supergirl. That's cute. It was really cute. And then her Twitters went up to 16,000. So it's not like you think that like DC fans. Right. Come on. Get, where yeah, are you? Right. Get where on are the board. DC fans? <laughs> They're, 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 maybe some of them are like, we're going to we're gonna reserve judgment. Well, we're I gonna, don't. We're going to wait and see. Well, I hope that they support <laughs> this person. Yeah, because, me too. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm actually not familiar with their work. <laughs> well, let's just be supportive, right? Right. Like, and, and like get excited, I guess, that this, this film about this character that's super fast if you're, is finally So moving. the subject that this was supposed to be. Yes. We have not covered, and we're probably not going to cover it. Uh, welcome to the Just Enough Trope podcast. Yes. Uh, where we don't cover what we cover. Oh, uh, stop. I'm your host, Caliban, joined as always by my co-host. Hi, I'm Ikan Hana. And we're bringing you the news that's fit to cast in the world of nerdy entertainment. Yes. And I didn't say all, but maybe we'll hold some back. <laughs> Leave something to the imagination. Yeah, sure. But the reason that I bring it up is that... DC as a uh, as a filmic property mm. is, or just even as a TV, as a visual medium, uh, is totally happy just doing whatever. Sure, there's a long tradition of um, Elseworlds and multi- multiple universes sure. um, in the comics, but a TV executive doesn't know about that. Mm. <laughs> but for some reason, TV and movie executives are like, yeah, I'm another Superman? Fine, good. Yeah, right. How many Batmans we got now? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Batwoman, we totally... need a new Batwoman? All right, fine. Yeah, DC's totally fine with that. Whereas, like, <laughs> you have to imagine, do you think like Melissa Benoist was like, there's a shot. I've got a shot. Uh-huh. And it was like, wait a minute, I work for Warner Brothers. No, they're just going to add three new Supergirls. Right. Well, look at Grant, what's his, Grant Gustafson? Like, Gustin. Like, Gustin. You never once got that right. I don't know why. I don't know either. I, I have no idea. It's such idea. a superhero comic book name. Grant Gustin. I don't know why I want to make it longer. Uh, anyways, like he was cast and he was playing The Flash on TV yeah. long before um, Ezra Miller was cast. No, and speaking of a Flash film with no movement, uh, it's been going on so long that they had the opportunity to have... Uh, what's his name? Show up on the Flash. I know. <laughs> so there's two Flashes. I know. Um, so anyway, as always, remains to be seen if this film exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does seem like it's moving forward, and I think that's a good thing. I think so too. I think that Marvel's getting hip to this, though. Uh oh. As we've seen on One Division. Oh yeah, that's and apparently, that's true. yeah, it's been revealed. Um, it's sort of like uh, you know, like playing Guess Who. Uh, does he have a hat on? No, it's not the guy with the hat on. Well, the guy with the hat on in this case is wearing it to keep his head warm. Patrick Stewart revealed that he would not be appearing on One Division, but he had been approached by Kevin Feige <gasps> in the previous months to talk about being in dot 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 something. What? So, so we don't know if it was One Division. We don't know if it was. If the multiverse of madness That's what will I'm really thinking. be a multiverse of madness. That's what I'm thinking. Or if there is going to be some other extra dimensional uh, you know, involvement uh, in future Marvel properties. 
I'm thinking it would be sort of like a onboarding, um, a ramp, if you will. But it's it's fine. Uh, wow. For you know, at lovers of the X Men Fox films, sure to have you know them come over Patrick to Marvel. Stewart smooth the way as um, the Honestly, old Professor X. It's not a bad idea. Uh, especially since Patrick Stewart is so beloved. I mean, how he's not going to do it though. You don't think so? No, he's he, already said part of the interview was him saying he he wouldn't. I put be... that character to bed. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, okay. So now, whose head do you shave, Jennifer Lawrence? You get her in there. She puts her fingers up to her temple. Oh, it's it's uh, okay. So 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 we think we got Xavier, but really we got Mystique. Is that what you're saying? Well, she's already, yeah, that's why people say that. She's like, why not get Rebecca Romaine? Yeah, I know. Or, uh, um, do you think you, they will try to get James McAvoy? Or Kojak. Yeah. Do you think they'll try I to was get. I'm so surprised if I know that they had, they had that dumb idea that Kojak was going to be in uh, the first Superman movie because it's like, oh, it's bald. Alex Luther bald. A Kojak bald. <laughs> what? I don't know, man. I don't know. That's, that, that's weird reasoning, is what it is. It certainly is. Um, do you think they'll get James McAvoy to be in these movies? Like, do you think they'll approach him? He's the to Sandman be... now. Yeah, or I don't one know. Of them. To multiversal Xavier. Sandman. Yeah, well, Sand, Sandsman. Sure, Sandsman. Sandsman. He's on the podcast, though. He's he's not. <laughs> oh, <did> you... <laughs> yeah. Are you looking down your nose at podcasts? No. If you look right no. now in front of your nose, there's a microphone. I'm not. And, look... a, and a pop filter. Hold, hold, walk yourself back. Check yourself <laughs> before you wreck yourself. No, I am not. But I'm just saying we have not physically seen him as the Sandman. All right, we'll stop saying anything because we got to move on with the show. All right. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, it is a special day. Uh, it's a special time. It's a special month, a special weekend. Mm-hmm. Here are all the reasons. Yes. Uh, it is February 21st. It is the 10-year anniversary mm-hmm. of the passing away of Dwayne McDuffie. Right. That's not what we're excited about. No. Although it is a chance to celebrate his legacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 20th of February is his birthday. Yes. did Shakespeare go out on his birthday or close I to it? Think I, I so. We don't know exactly when he was born. But anyway, sign of genius right there. <laughs> uh, and it's Black History Month. Yes. And so for these reasons, we wanted to celebrate Dwayne. We wanted to celebrate black history and celebrate a great character. Mm-hmm. And that's why we read Static. Yes. The Milestone comic from 1993, mm-hmm. uh, published under the DC imprint. Not at the time a part of the DC universe, technically. Mm-hmm. Although you can always just say, well, we didn't mention. So, oh, look, Superman. <laughs> Issue 15. Oh, look, there he is. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> never, never appeared. Right. While the Dakota's being torn apart by big bang babies. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, we read the first four issues because yes. uh, we didn't want to go through the whole thing, although we do want to go through the whole thing. And also, in order to uh, accentuate this static celebration, uh, we watched the first four episodes of Static Shock. Yes. Static Shock! <laughs> now available on HBO Max. Yes. It just recently came out on HBO Max. Static Shock, a cartoon which, like the comic book, I think a lot of people overlooked at the time, uh, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, but... It's this is a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the fact that it is now sharing a spot with Batman the Animated Series, mm-hmm. with Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. Yes. Where's the Zeta Project? That's my real question. Oh boy, I don't even I don't even know what that is. I got to be honest <laughs> okay. with you. Well, that show's coming up in six months, I guess. <laughs> okay. But anyway, that's what we're doing today. We're talking about Dwayne McDuffie, talking about his work, yes. and specifically about the character Static. Yeah. I'm I'm really excited. I'm excited for the show. Um, I'm excited to to talk about this character and to talk about all of Dwayne's work. So me too. Yeah. Um, especially uh, damage control. Yeah i I think you just told me recently that he he was behind damage yeah, control. Yeah. No, I didn't realize that. I don't know why. Um, it's such I, a <laughs> it's, it's a good idea because it's it just is like, a good idea, you know. Especially just um, what, uh, reading uh, the Static book and then watching uh, Static Shock, and it's like this kid's murder on infrastructure. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's like, hey, I could use uh, metal. My powers interact with metal. It's great, it's like, but great. Yeah. You're so right. everything that's in a city that everybody uses every day right. <laughs> to live. Yeah. It's this great metaphor that I'm sure Dwayne intended, which is like he has this ability, but it also it's it, it's only useful 
in the, the urban in center the that man created. Right. But also it, it is it is destructive when used poorly. You know, it, it is like the application of of um, a p- power, governmental, legislative power. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, and like, like the police and law enforcement, something like that. all these mm-hmm. things are tools that are, can be used uh, for good or for, for evil. Well, that's true. And um, yeah, depending on using what he, 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 we'll get into it, but he uses, he's quick thinking and, and is creative on like what he can use. But yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, I'll just take this light pole and wrap it around this guy but it's like now now, now there's no light pole there and <laughs> right, yeah. now we got to fix that and you know maybe it, he sneaks back at night and then just right. puts the light pole unbends he, it he he becomes uh an electrician as well on the side you know you know when nobody's looking uh and if you drop him in the middle of the ocean he's screwed ooh yeah, good point. Or unless can you figure something out. Well, unless you put him somewhere where there's a lot of buried treasure or shipwrecks or something like that. Well, I would say, yeah, that's true. I was going to just pull up the, oh my God. <laughs> it's a Titanic. The, Indian, the Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but would his powers work in water? That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to. I wonder. I wonder. If I mean, every hypothetical, you know, right. can, can go on all day. Yeah, that's true. What if you take Superman and you make him eat? kryptonite <laughs> and then it's under he's under a red sun what if you gave him kryptonite dentures? and he hasn't had any sleep yeah right no sleep at all no sleep <laughs> so that's what we're talking about at the end of the show but first let's talk about some news well we don't have to start with rips this week uh because i don't think uh that i've heard of wow uh, anybody's passed away thank god that that's uh first in a while so, so we're doing sex so pests good. instead Oh yay! What what is it now? You can almost you can almost see the evil genius of some 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 good news, whatever Krasinski's <sighs> yeah. total clutch was. Yeah, good. Yep, yep. I I hear you. If that man is Reed Richards, I I swear. <laughs> uh, James Franco has settled his sexual misconduct suit. Okay, I didn't know he there was one. Oh my god. Get um, ready. Oh, boy. Strap in. Okay. You must be this tall, but not this old to ride. In Ew. 2019, he was uh, sued by <clears throat> a pair of former students of his acting school. <gasps> oh, my God. That's gross. It was alleged that he intimidated <laughs> these students into sexual situations. Great. And uh, this is only – actually, he was, it was a class action suit, and, and this um, – he's settling with two of the um, of plaintiffs. Them. Okay, And sure. the rest of the plaintiffs' claims are being dismissed uh, without prejudice, which means that they can um, basically refile them, um, either class or not. Wow. And in the suit, they allege that uh, he had forced the students to perform explicit sex scenes on camera in what they described what? as a, quote – Orgy type setting during, and this is the best part. And like, we're already, you're like trying to hold the puke down, right? Yeah. But the last part of the sentence is during a master class he held on sex scenes. And that's where I go, hold on. Why is he doing this? Well, I have a few. As as someone who uh, was to studied theater yeah. uh, in college, what is a master class? On sex scenes. That's what I want to know. And the joke is, how do I get in? And how many credit hours is? Is it what? Uh-huh. What is what? What is it? Why did the school when you go to film let school, him do this? When you go to film, no, no, he, it's his school. Uh, I I wasn't done. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to do the joke bit, but you okay. got you got the crumb scraper out. <laughs> uh, but, what, is there like a? I mean, there's on camera classes, sure, but is there like a? Oh, it's sex scene 101. Bring your um, own pasties. I've wow, I've never. Heard and then of also, this. it's a master class. Yeah. So I don't know if the author of this article on Variety is gilding the lily, or yeah, what is going on? Or if they're just reading right out of the student handbook. I don't know. Anyway, it sounds very, very suspect. Yes. Yes, I agree. That is gross. That is. He's denied the claims, um, uh-huh. but he is settling. And you'll notice uh, you haven't heard from him in a, in a while, have you? No. Of course, 2020 has been it's been rough for everybody. So yeah, no, no, you made that point before. <laughs> Are you just gonna bring that up? This with is every an acting school thing? that he founded with uh, some uh, friends, I guess, but also uh, just uh, coworkers, whatever. It's called the Studio Four School. Okay, I mean, 
see, it, you're an, you're a young actor, and you're like James well, Franco. Not that, oh, I see. Yeah, you. and and James Franco has a school. I'd be intrigued. But like, oh no, you would be, and this is and this is something like that his defense used against them is that uh-huh. he said the plaintiffs, you know, they we've chose. seen in correspondence that they said they're they were excited, they were proud to be part of it. Of course, they're college students, yeah, and the right. guy from the interview wants to kiss up on him. Yeah, yeah. This guy's he's he keeps getting away with it, Walter White style. You, he was okay. texting the 16-year-olds or whatever a couple years oh, back. Remember right. that? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. He it's can't just, be it's worth really that gross. much. Yeah. There are I people know. like um like Johnny Depp, like he would get to work forever uh if nobody said anything or did anything or you mm-hmm. know we didn't have the the legal case uh going yeah, right. against him. Right, 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 right. And then Disney's like, "Oh, we'll pull the plug." But like James Franco does not make enough money for anybody for this to keep happening, does he? I didn't think so. I would. He's not somebody I'd be like. Now he's. You have his name on a film. Oh wow, that's gonna be box office gold, you know. So that's terrible. Also, we here's an update on. Uh, we talked about Chris D'Elia before, mm-hmm. and the kind of. Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, of the spec spe- the specifics. <laughs> now you got me doing it. The specifics. Why is it yeah. spe- specificity? Uh-huh. Spe- specific specificity. Because English is weird. Yeah, it's a weird language. It's it's, it's pretty weird. Yeah. Um. He had been accused of uh you know of of creepishness of grooming uh young right. fans mm-hmm. uh, over social media mm-hmm. and whatnot. And um, he released a 10 minute YouTube video on Friday oh and addressed goodness. the misconduct allegations against him do i even want to know well what what did he say it's um he you know he he tried to uh cut through the middle of it he said that he has a problem and that sex has controlled his life his words okay Uh, but he maintains his relationships have been consensual and legal well i mean i mean what can i really take away from that he said that he has a chance to apologize here did you do that sir and he said did you apologize to his fiance and his friends, he says he's sorry. But you're not sorry to the people who say that you tried to groom them. Well, I don't know where we at. Where we're at legally. <laughs> yeah. I don't think this isn't a James Franco. Yeah. No. Situation. Okay. This is a save my career kind of situation. Yeah. All right. And save my upcoming marriage situation too. For um, that matter. Let me just start off by saying because this is going to end with me not defending him but showing empathy for him. Let me start off by saying that. I don't find him funny in any way. Okay. And I feel no need to, to rescue his career. But as somebody with a problem uh-huh. that we all acknowledge right. he clearly has. Right. He is somebody who it can't control that problem. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And so, yeah, obviously you have to answer to the law. You have to answer to what society thinks is right and wrong. But at some point, you you know, these people need help. Yeah, so right. I hope that he is getting I hope so too. The help that he needs, and I—I I mean, I guess the first step is you know always and maybe the admitting judge will it. Consider that if he gets it. Yeah. Right. Why do they always start the news like this? Because it I gets don't fun. Because it gets fun later on. Yeah. I, yeah. Are we just getting it out of the way? That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Right. Ugh. All right. Gina Carano. <laughs> Did I? That was the timing. Did I wait long enough? Yeah, I, 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 you started laughing pretty quickly. So, Gina Carano, after being let go from The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. was hired by I don't know how this works because she was hired to do a movie with The Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro. Now, Ben Shapiro is Didn't not some about, Hollywood yeah. mogul. Uh-huh. He, the run fight to hide to take a crap whatever his movie is right is that he had he bought that from a festival he had nothing to do with that film yeah yeah, yeah. he is just a distributor basically mm-hmm. so but i th- he, but he does want to make content i think yes and so for that reason he has teamed with gina carano who will give everybody her side of the story when she sits down for a no holds bar- for a many holds barred interview yeah, right with ben shapiro about how mean disney was to her and she's not the only one who's been bullied by Disney. Did, yeah. Did you know that? That's true. Yeah. That's true. <sighs> Disney hates women. I don't know if you knew that. I – it's it's difficult. Like she just doesn't – she doesn't get it. Like she's 
been a bully. She's been saying things that were hurtful and people have told her, hey, this is hurtful for me and tried to educate her and she just didn't want to listen. And she just, you know, like it was like, I don't care more or less. And then like, this is my opinion. And then she gets some, she has consequences. And then she's like, oh, they've been mean to me. Like, I mean, uh, you were a lot tougher when you were picking on gay and trans kids. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> you know I just I mean? don't even. Yeah, bullies generally can't take it. Uh, she just seems like a mean, unhappy person. And she I don't, does. Maybe I'll extend the, uh, the, empathy, the empathy, not to Franco, but I'd say like, I hope that she, you know, gets the help or the emotional support that she seems to need. Yeah, I don't think she's going to get that through doing an interview with Ben Shapiro. <laughs> no, she's going to be radicalized. She's going to need to do more work than that. Um, she's going to wrestle George Washington. Uh, and win. I mean, I do think that sometimes, you know, bullies – were bullied at some point. So I don't know what her story Ooh, is. Who friggity who. <laughs> I know. Sometimes. You an adult now. You're not a kid in short pants. I know. Do you know what I mean? I know. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna you miss, gotta be an act like an adult. You're gonna miss that Disney money. Yeah. All right. That's it. Now we're gonna be nice for the rest of the show. Okay. Everything is culture war and everything is <sighs> mean and recrimination. I know. I did. I was gonna drop one. I don't have one. <laughs> That would have been wow. the perfect. That would, that's where I would have dropped it. Yeah. If I had a story about Letitia Wright or something, who, by the way, tweeted about vaccinations, and that's yes. just ignorance. Yeah. Right. Right. I get that people, and yeah, I, I understand. You know, um, especially um, in the black community, the idea of uh, what's in this needle, like, yeah, I right. Get it. I, I get it too, but. We can't. We we also stand at a weird point as far as vaccinations go. Like we there really are diseases do. who were basically dead that are coming back now. You mm-hmm. know, um, mm-hmm. take the vaccine. It's it's okay. It's it's important. The vaccine is fine. The company that's making the vaccine is definitely bilking somebody for the vaccine. Like that's not okay. But the scientists yeah. who made it, mm-hmm. they don't want to hurt you. No. No, they don't. Yeah. They absolutely do not. Knock and on, knock on wood. Yeah, and it's going to be better for just like how's that wearing... vaccine going? You got it? Yeah, good. Do you, do you get Wi-Fi? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm immortal now. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, I <laughs> was that the first or the second shot? Oh, the second one. Uh-huh. Uh, I know Blade. He says hi. <laughs> um... You know Blade. <laughs> Is he paying his taxes? Um, uh, he hasn't shared that information with me. But <laughs> when I think of when you say Blade, I know Mahersha Ali is going to play Blade and he's going to do great. But yeah. When you say Blade, I think of Wesley Snipes. I do too. And it's it's partially because Wesley Snipes thought of Blade when he thought of Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the set of Blade Three, but yeah, um, I just that you know they I, have I, to involve him in the film somehow. I think that great even, even just like a small little cameo just yeah. like like a little nod you know something um i think that'd be really cool you know or if he's just like you know old blade passing the torch sure yeah we'll have a multi-generational blade situation i i think that'd be really cool um but yeah oh, we'll see who knows i feel like that's something else has gotten pushed back because of all of this you know well, like, it was already going to be phase five. But... I know, I know. But when is it going to be open season on all suck heads? <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, comic movies, uh-huh. and we've got a few to talk about. Yeah. Did you know that Edgar Wright is not directing a comic movie? Tricked you in Whoa, my transition. You did, and he will be developing um, a remake of The Running Man for Paramount. Yes, or I should say, I don't know, an adaptation of the short story, which I guess the original one was, but. Yeah, um, I I'm I'm in tr- I'm not exactly sure how to feel about this because I found out I haven't looked into it a whole lot, but I found out I I like the Arnold Schwarzenegger film, but I found out that the book is very different yeah. from the the Schwarzenegger film. Yeah. I mean, there's so, still a man that's running. But. Yeah, the, the the basic premise is there. Is um, it a novel? It's it's short though. Well, is no. it? It's probably I don't like 200, know. I don't know. 300 pages. I just know that it's It's different. not a stand. But sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. Very few things are a stand. Yeah. <laughs> Standing up my <laughs> coffee table right now. I know, right. Um, so I don't – I'm not exactly sure how to feel about this because like, it, like first is react- it going to be funny? Well, my first reaction was, oh, a, a wacky running man. But then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> the were, running man were, was wacky. It was wacky. Yeah. I mean – 
do you have Schwarzenegger in it? This could be perfect. <laughs> the only thing that I, I think is um, a little off about this is because, um, uh, you know, the original Running Man, mm-hmm. uh, Paul Glazer? I can't remember who directed it, but it was written by Stephen E. D'Souza, you okay. know, in the – right in the – down the, the lane of the cocaine binge of the 80s, oh, you know? Boy. So he was like bringing the the Philip K. Dick stuff hard. Uh-huh. So oh, I know it's, uh, it's King, but it's like the future dystopia. And right. like it's six bucks for a Coke. Um, we're not there yet, <laughs> but we're getting there. And it's like the, um, the Verhoeven-esque uh, – Right. Uh, – ridiculous violence and the uh the inurement to uh to suffering and, and that's right of thing. but the, the good commentary guy, on the good guy didn't kill whatever. 40 hungry people right but he's going to kill 40 employees of this television station getting out of here you know that kind right. of like we're the good guys but the devil may care kind of thing mm-hmm. um and i think that Wright can can add his visual touches to it and keep the comedy. The other thing is, like, Wright's films are generally very positive and they're up. And they don't mm-hmm. have that kind of, like, I'm smiling so hard, my gums are bleeding, like, bleakness of mm-hmm. something like The Running Man or something like RoboCop or something like that. Well, and I think that even, That kind of, like, like, bright future, but it's like, is it a good future? Thumbs up. Well, I mean, like, so it's it's King, right? So I know Oh, he has nothing to do with it. Oh, well, but I mean, what I was going to say is like, I know he's written stuff that like isn't like specifically horror, but is the story like. No, all of like... his stuff is like, woo. <laughs> woo. <laughs> woo. There's a running competition. Now, let me explain what the woo is. You see, he put his hands <laughs> up like this, and the character's got a real dumb name. Uh, and uh, Boxcar <laughs> Murphy wasn't sure, but he thought maybe the man was wiggling his hands back and forth. <laughs> While going woo, he has to. He always explains all of the weird. Something really weird and scary happens, and then later on, a character goes, "Maybe it was this that happened." It's like it's like he can, can't just can let you out. go. Oh, right, right. Well, I hope Edgar Wright lets us go. Oh, and um, we can figure it out. <laughs> I don't want to go that. <laughs> I was going something a little different. Oh, it's okay. subtle. Sorry. But maybe it'll be a subtle difference. Yeah. We'll see. There will be a lot of, uh, will you put the onomatopoeia Scott Pilgrim stuff in there? Imagine Scott Pilgrim, but instead oh they don't goodness. turn to coins. Like they, their head just comes off when you cut it off and then blood comes out. And that's, oh, that, that's, that's what actually I'm about. dark. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's actually really dark. I don't know. That could be good, though. I think Baby Driver is probably his darkest film. I was thinking about that. Uh, yeah, that I had that in the back of my head. And the dancing and soul music. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's like the most darkest violent film he's ever made uh, with soul music. Yeah, And right. I don't count the the zombie stuff. That's not. No, because it's that's silly. Yeah. It's silly. We're already talking about movies. Let's talk about movie trailers. Two big trailers have come out recently. Um, we can flip a coin or you can pick which one we talk about first. Um, how, let's talk about uh, Cruella. Oh, you're a vegetables before dessert kind of person. <laughs> Depending on your taste. Maybe you liked the trailer for Cruella. Um, Here it is. Oh, I've, I've always been a bit of a bad girl. Yeah, and right. And totally crazy. Wait, it's not really the tone. No, it's not. It's, it's dark and weird and she's unhinged and... She lives in a constitutional monarchy. Yes. I, wow. <laughs> what, 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 what? The listeners will get it. Um, what do you think about the comparisons that the internet made to Joker? I kind of feel like that's what they were going for. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Um, but especially like who her, thought it like was with the mascara running idea. and everything. I don't know because I think. Jeff Bridges. <sighs> Jolie Richardson? Glenn Close. Oh, it's fun. Oh, Glenn Close. Wow, you're over the top. Yeah, right. Evolves into, oh, I'm going to burn this place to the ground. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's How just... does she get her skinning knife? Oh, the, the, these prequels, you always get to see all the other things. I know. You know. How does it all come together? I know. And the dogs know that she's evil because they're I don't think there's going to be a ton of dogs in this film. No, I don't think so either. I think we're going to leave that for later. Um, Maybe a dog kills her parents or something. Oh, my gosh. I No. No. She's about to fall into a pit of chemicals. And a dog's paw reaches out. 
uh-huh. to help her back up. But then the dog doesn't have thumbs, no opposable thumbs. And so her she, her hand just slips off. She falls in the chemicals. Just just like the Joker. And a villain Joker. is born. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's like the Joker. Yeah. Um, I did not love it. Mira. <laughs> oh Mira. <laughs> just do it in, uh, in. Emma Stone has the kind of British accent, which is perfect, which means it's not perfect. <laughs> which means it's not good. <laughs> it's the kind of British accent that is like clearly honed by a team of uh, dialect coaches. Yeah, right. And it's just like, it's just too perfect. Mm-hmm. And then you get somebody like, and she's got an unfair advantage because she's lived over there for a while, but like Jillian Anderson, who is... I know. Yeah, uh, she's... Her her English accent is... In sex education, she's pushing it a little bit, but she has a very natural she does. British accent, and it's accent that she can do. Um, and so you don't think about it. No, but you When don't. I hear Emma Stone use a British accent, I think about... Emma Stone just talking actress with a British accent. Doing the Br- yeah. British accent. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, I think Cruella is a, a mean character, but I don't know that I ever really thought that she was, uh, um, you know, had like uh, psychological issues. I mean, obviously she doesn't like dogs and she's really weird and she's kind of horrible. Um, but, but don't you wonder how she became this self-possessed figure who is clearly like just one, you know, tap away from shattering (laughs) and becoming like a full on murderous maniac? You know, I, I never really wondered that. No, I didn't either. I, I gotta be honest. I didn't either. But guess what? You're going to learn the inner psychologies of every Disney villain over the next 20 years. Are we going to get Ursula next? See, that I'd want to see. I, I kind of would want to see that one because yeah. I think there's some uh, there's some things to get Unfortunately, into there. Fortunately, divine is is passed on, but we could we could cast that and um, yeah, I guess live action. I don't know. I yeah, but uh, we, but we'll but I refuse to play this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would throw that on the fire with yes. all of them. I yes. Stop me this. too. Stop this. All right, should we talk about the second trailer? Or we're done with this one? Oh, you wanted to keep going? Um, I You're a good we were, host. I, I apologize. We done. Yes. <laughs> well, let's move on. Let's just criticize it and say bad things and move on. Um, uh, let's talk about Mortal Kombat. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited about this. And I'm kind of surprised that I'm excited about a, a video game movie. Um, because a lot of live action video game movies are not that great. Or... What about the aforementioned Scott Pilgrim and the Well, yeah, that that's fun, but that's based on a comic, you know, right? And I mean, I know it has like video game aspects to it and to the comic and everything, but it wasn't. It was... I think we're both right oh. and both wrong. Oh, okay, all right. Um, it can work. What about right? Street Fighter? Um, Street Fighter. Where's Chun Li? Yeah, mm-hmm. Street Fighter's fun, but it's not necessary. I don't know. It's fun. This looks fun. This this looks like it knows what it is, and it's going for it. I, it knows what it is. It's an action movie yeah. aimed at nerdy audiences yes. in the uh, in the second decade of the 21st century. Right. Which means it's a superhero movie. And I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. And I think that, weirdly, I think that's a, part of its appeal. Yeah. You know, the first one just had to have the head, the dragon head kind of swivel in and go, Mortal Kombat. Right, right, right. All right, I'll go see this thing. And then it ends up looking like a high school production, (laughs) uh, you know, of just a bunch of kids jumping around. Um, But yeah, this looks like, um, I don't know how much they spent, but they, you know, spent the requisite amount. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's actually good that it's mostly unknowns. I don't know. I think so too. Except for the guy um, who plays a samurai and everything. Yes. Um, Hiroaki. Sonata, okay. I his name wrong, but, um, but uh, and I think that's good because no, so nobody's person, nobody's going to get in the way. Right, right, it's right. It's not going right, to be. Right. Oh, why is the Highlander riding? You know, it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, right. You'll get to know these <laughs> actors and these characters. But they had to create a new guy. Why did they make a new character? I is that can't resist. Did the Midway suits or whoever owns Mortal Kombat now go? But we have to have something that we can. The next game we put out, you have sure. to get it because it's got that great character in it. Right, right, right. And if you're going to do that, why is it so bland? Mm-hmm. Get me. Hmm. 
get me a brown haired man who karate kicks. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. That's, that's like that's video game thinking. Y- yeah, that's like you have this huge, rich world where you can create just about anything you want, right? And it's just like whatever you want could be some sort of fighting technique, right? And that's what they went with. Well, I think they're trying to maybe integrate it with, you know, the current craze for MMA. But I'm like, this is a thing where, you know, you fall through the floor and you come out the top of the screen and, like, stab somebody, you know? Like, this right, right, is right. Not, this is an MMA. No, it's what not. What if it's a fake out? What if Cole, they put Cole, position him as this great new guy, and it's like, yeah, Cole, you got the touch. Get out there and do it. It's like, ah, boom, Cole's head gets punched off. And then oh Luke Kang's like, no. And then Luke Kang is just the hero like he's supposed to be. <laughs> it's all a fake out. <laughs> I should I shouldn't laugh, but it's kind of it's kind of funny to think about. Um, yeah, they've done that in movies. Do that. Where you're like, oh, we're gonna follow Mister. This, Mr. Be this is Mister. Protagonist. Yeah, right, and right, then right. He, Like dies immediately. Like, oh my god. Right, right. Now god, what are we doing? Sigourney Weaver's here. Or whatever right, it is. exactly. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Well, um... Weaver combat. <laughs> I'm excited to see that. Hmm. Which Sigourney Weaver character would you take? I know you would say Ripley, but I would think, say Ripley. But think carefully, though. Um, I think Ripley's like the most kick butt. Dana I mean, Barrett can transform into a demon dog. Well, that's true. There is that. And uh, Avatar Lady <laughs> Grace <laughs> can transform into an eight foot wow. tall cat. Uh huh. With knives, giant bow. Huh. Mm, I think I'd still have to go Ripley. I think I'm going to go Ripley. Cabin in the Woods, Ripley, uh, Sigourney Weaver, yeah. has an alien in a box downstairs. <laughs> she must be more powerful than Ripley. <laughs> All right. Um, God, she was... <laughs> and then, what about, and then, there's, then there's Death in the Maiden, Sigourney Weaver. She's got a gun. <laughs> oh, no. That's a deep gut. Uh, mm. All right. So those that's our trailer talk. Let's do uh, one more story before we move on. Um, I wanted to mention that DC's Black Adam movie is looking for a villain, which is weird. <laughs> because <laughs> because I think there's a villain in the title. Black Adam is but villain, it's right? it's maybe more of an antihero in this case. Sure. Okay. Shazadam. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I love it so much. Shazadam. Let's see what happens with that. <laughs> and they have cast Marwan Kenzari, an actor who starred okay. in Aladdin and The Old Guard. Oh. He will be playing an undisclosed role. The 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 guy who played Aladdin. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, he played, oh, I think, okay. Jafar in Aladdin, and in oh. he was the um, Middle Eastern guy in... Um, oh, oh, in, in, in the Old Guard. In the Old Guard, yeah. Okay, okay. I saw something else. There's some rumor about the guy be, who played Aladdin being cast in something, and I can't for the life of me remember what that was. So that And means- was the article about he's like, man, people just see me as Aladdin. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sure it mentioned that. You were in that. a $2 billion movie. <laughs> I know. Um, I shouldn't laugh. Um, okay. Um, Man, I guess I'll have to go to James Franco's acting school. Get some more acting. Oh, my God. Please don't. <laughs> like, please don't. This please sounds like a great class. Don't go to that school. Um, Not funny. And, okay, um... So we don't. We just don't... We just don't know anything. We just know that he's cast. No, he's, and I... And, uh, you know, I was um, trying to speculate on, like, who would the bad guy... Who would Black Adam be tangling against? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of minor villains, but... Okay. You know, we're thinking we're thinking multiverse or we're thinking yeah. franchise right? Right. So who do you pit him against who you could bring back or it connects to another villain or franchise or something like that so right. we can have um, some vertical in- vertical integration. Sure. Um, and I came up with this thing because, because Black Adam is just kind of connected to, to Captain Marvel and that's it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, maybe he'll be an alligator guy. Or well, something. maybe he'll be a completely new character. Which <laughs> you mean, it'll be Cole from yeah, Mortal right. Kombat. <laughs> Why are you a different person? <laughs> different head. Oh no! Got it punched off. New ones on. Oh, that's horrible.
An insecure teenager living in the big city is gifted with amazing powers that give him new confidence and a different identity. But now he's faced with the problem of juggling Mm -hmm. his old life and his new life and making enemies who want to see him destroyed. Yes. It's Spider-Man. It's static. <laughs> and I and I bring that up yes. because you, can, you have as to. I was reading the comic book, it immediately gave me Spider-Man vibes. Yes. And I loved it. Yeah. And I don't consider that comparison to be uh, uh, bad at all, a no. criticism in any way. Uh-uh, not at all. He doesn't have an uncle. No, it's not It's who, not who, who a, says, a one-to-one you're gonna thing. You're going to have p- responsibility. He wasn't he wasn't bitten uh, by like uh, a lightning bug and now he has electrical powers he's, or he anything doesn't like that. Go, I'm gonna be a wrestler. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was a different time. Uh, <laughs> They're like Spider Man suits kinda looked like a wrestling why, suit. Why is <laughs> Macho Man yelling at me? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's not like that. But no. it's but it's it's repeating that those kind of beats in a different in it's funny, it's you know, it's one of the reasons that uh, I have to admit, I never really read this uh, when I was younger is because it, you know, came out in the 90s, in the early right. 90s. And th- that was a huge time for comics. So mm-hmm. I was buying, I was spending, you know, 100 bucks a week sure. in, in 90s money on comics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, I knew about it and I guess I saw it, but I just looked at it and thought, I don't know if there's anything for me there. And I was a dumb kid uh, because it doesn't. It it transcends. It does. I mean, it's just a it's just a hero, and I love plenty of heroes that are, you know, all kinds of nationalities or, or oh yeah, races, genders and, and whatever. But for sure. um, but I just thought like, oh well, that's not for me. Right. I'm I'm not a, a black teen. This isn't this isn't for me. Or you know, that yeah. Sort and it of wasn't thing. like they're printing a lot of them. It's not like I was going to buy one and a black teen wasn't going to get one. Right. right. <laughs> I, just, I I get what you're saying there too. I just figured like, oh, okay, I think I see what this is, but. Stupidly, I missed out on uh, an, not only an exciting book, but an exciting line of comics. Right. Like I right. was unfamiliar with um, a lot of the uh, the different co- uh, characters uh, in the Dakota verse. Yeah, right. And From I was reading about. Yeah. I was reading about um, Icon. They're kind of Superman type yes. character, and like his backstory is is crazy. Is it? It's it's similar in in some way to to superman cuz he's an alien i guess but okay he there an alien ship like crash landed or like flew by earth and he was when he was a baby he was um came out in an escape pod and okay. the escape pod crashed uh in america in the south okay in the 1800s whoa yeah that is crazy yeah okay so i was not expecting that and as that. an alien like he you know Basically, I think he like transformed into or he was altered to become like the first, you know, person that he encountered mm. for defensive purposes. Okay, sure. And it was a black person. Right. Um, and so the, the icon that's around now is the same icon that was alive then. He's lived through all that time. Okay. So it takes But imagine yeah, a right. character, I mean, it's as icon, it's just a great name. Like, imagine a character who represents, who has all this power, but represents and sees like what black people have gone through in America and yeah. around the world who's living up until today. Like, that's a complicated, uh, it, that's a complicated, complicated hero. <laughs> yeah. I mean? For sure. Yeah. Um, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, and like one thing I really like about the the comic too uh, about about Static is, um, you know, he he mentions Icon a couple of times and is like, I wonder if Icon has to deal with this. Yeah, thing, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I think does I I don't I'm not really familiar with Icon, but I'm guessing that he has like a secret identity sort of thing too. But people probably don't know about it. But like, well, they have their like. There's a their super team like the the Shadow Cabinet, right? Um, and Icon and character a character like Hardware. They've got the, you know when you start a universe, you have to kind of like try Build to fill it. all those niches, you know? right? So get the team, get the 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 big main hero, mm-hmm. get the teen hero. Um, and the people that put this together, they knew that. Of course. So, yeah, they filled in all those blanks pretty nicely. But, yeah, but Static, though, he represents that that great thing in the tradition of a of a Spider-Man mm-hmm. or what have you. Um, 
And DC has replicated this mm-hmm. a million times now. Every time sure, that they make right. a new version of one of their legacy heroes, it's mm-hmm. like, I'm a teen and I found a magic rock and now I'm rock man. Right, right, right. And, you know, they executed in good or worse ways. But I this mean, is not even being necessarily in the main DC continuity. Like this mm-hmm. is th- this comic hits the ground running. Right. Or flying on a trench gun lid. And <laughs> or I thought it was a manhole cover. <laughs> or that too, yeah. Whatever's just lying around. Yeah. And yeah. and just keeps it going from there. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh talk talk to me. Talk about who this character is. Uh so yeah, I, I do really like the this this aspect of um Virgil is, is he has newfound superhero powers, but he, he is very much a teen. You know, and uh, he, like Spider-Man, he, he struggles with balancing that. Um, and I was reading some of the, um, you know, the, the letters that people were writing as this was coming out. And I, because I, I read that sort of thing. I know you're laughing at me. But, but somebody mentioned, and I have to agree, there was a really nice balance of Virgil and Static in yeah. these comics. Like, Static is not you know, overly present, if you would, you know, so to speak. Where, whereas um, that's not, there's, you don't always find that balance. They're the same person. I know they're the same sorry, person. Sorry to spoil that for you. I know they're the same person. I'm just like, you know, like sometimes if it's Spider-Man and Peter Parker, there's more Spider-Man featured in the story. No. You don't think so? No, I think, again, I don't oh, think it's okay. ripping anything off. I think it's just the way the formula works. Yeah. Like the best Spider-Man stories are... Okay, yeah, you know, he um, saved um, that baby carriage from the goblin, but then he fell three stories, you know, mm-hmm. and, and bruised his, his hip, and he's got to limp into his apartment, mm-hmm. uh, which is still all sooty from when there was a fire, right. and MJ's there, and she's mad at him because right. he said that he would, like, meet her, you know, to get the dry cleaning or something like that. And Yeah, all the best Spider-Man stories are mm-hmm. always balancing both of those things. Yeah, but... And Static does that in, in the tradition, as was the custom at the time yeah and um i really like that i also like that you know he's quote unquote cooler as static I, more confident yeah um but who he has it? the quips and everything yeah Ooh. who is this though static is a, a teen who was um exposed to this gas that had um something in it that made him a metahuman uh, and he now has static and electromagnetic powers. Um, and he has decided to basically become a superhero with those powers. But he's still a regular teen and has to go to school and deal with his parents nagging him and the trials of dating and all that sort of thing. So As, as you do. As you do. He immediately becomes a superhero. Yes. No yeah. wrestling for him. No, no. He he's got his heart's in the right place. You know? Yeah. It's just I don't I don't know if, if I got the kind of powers that he got, I don't know if I'd immediately put a costume on and <laughs> go fight crime. Well but... I try to get, you know, quarters. I get phone calls for free. <laughs> you get the quarter back out. Yeah, but he <laughs> so limited wow. in imagination. Yeah, well, he. I mean, we have a montage, right, where he's like practicing what he can do. No and, more like... dryer sheets for me. <laughs> right. Yeah, we get that eventually because it it starts like most good stories do, um, immediate rest, where right. we just are introduced to the character, mm-hmm. um, defending uh, another character in the book. Yeah, Frida. Uh, Frida from uh, a gang who's um, who's messing with her. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, and then of course, you know, we get the origin story yes. um, later. Which I think was a good way to do it, you know, kind of like it gets you invested in the character, I think, um, you know, right away. You're like, ooh, who is this? What's his deal? That sort of thing. So Yeah. Um, and I mean, you kind of, I guess you're kind of getting it through Frida's eyes too in a way. Because it's like, oh, static seems so cool and everything. And then it's like, then it's revealed. She finds out who he is, like, almost right away. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. So, spoilers. Um, yeah. Um, well, you meet the whole gang. I mean, there's a whole cast of, of characters that appear yes. um, in this book. And you meet them all kind of right away, almost in a rush. It's a yeah. little, you know, it's uh, it's school. It's chaotic. Right. And, never, you know, there's always, like, um, people have a 
a gaggle of friends, mm-hmm. but you're almost kind of like, oh, who's, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Uh, right, right. <laughs> there and are people like, that will become very important later that yes. are only sort of introduced very briefly. That's true. Um, when you when you get in there, yeah. something about um, Virgil that sets him about uh, apart. Is yeah. that he has the name of two Roman poets. He does. But also, um, he is he's he's not who you think of of a your typical teenager. You know, he's um he's very verbose mm-hmm. and he he has a very big vocabulary. He does. Uh, that he sometimes gets picked on for. <laughs> and like looking at him, he's not drawn at least as far as I can tell, like a nerd. No, but he is but, a nerd. <laughs> but I mean, he's not okay. He's not like what you think of as a stereotypical nerd wearing glasses, get thrown in a locker. But he no, his goggles. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that he's not a nerd. Like no. he doesn't. I think that like when he's Virgil, when he's not static, he doesn't feel like he's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though other people might see him as cool, he doesn't feel like he's cool. Yeah. Uh, but static's cool. Static's got the one-liners, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe static is working really hard for those one-liners. I don't know. But it doesn't seem like he is. No. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a long tradition of um, people – getting their yayas out, you know, just being a different person or feeling like they can let go, be different when they put the mask on, mm-hmm. um, both good and bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's interesting that for a kid who is just trying to express himself, because that, once again, I don't mean to keep comparing this to Spider-Man, but, you know, comp- me comparing it to one of my favorite heroes is is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like that element exists in... The stories of Lee and Ditko and, and Peter Parker, but it's more, oh, the f- guy that plays football doesn't like me and picks on me. Oh, I'll never get the girl because I'm Peter Parker. But I feel like this is so much uh, – there's there's a, a there's a depth and a breadth to this mm-hmm. because it's not like he's some non-functioning nerd who's got the sweater vest – you know, and the and the huge glasses and the buzz cut haircut, right? And then, oh no, I got bit by a spider. Oh, I'm jumping away from a car <laughs> very fast. <laughs> I feel like Virgil's. You know, I think he's got. I think he's got the potential to have a good life ahead of him. Oh, for sure. Before static even happens. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm not sure because I've not read the entire series, but it almost feels like it's a bad thing for his personality to become static. To become static because he's like going to put that. That aspiration into the superhero side of the character. Mm, yeah. His like life, his life definitely his gets ego. detoured. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because um, immediately it's like, you know, for somebody, for a young kid, you don't think about it for for a young kid to, I mean, Peter Parker doesn't oh, got his aunt to answer to, but he's got like a whole family and now he's got to like lie to them. And the issues that we read, yeah. he loses his job. Oh my gosh. And I know. That was kind of He's already hard to got, read. there's a credibility gap with him as far as him and his mom go because he's a young kid who already doesn't want to do this job and he's irresponsible. But now right. he's being responsible. But it seems by like defending he's, the city. But it seems like he's being irresponsible because he's like, I have to leave to his boss. Yeah. And know? that's an element that I, Spider Man never really had, I don't think, because. No, I don't think Peter so. Peter Parker was a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> who would probably do whatever you asked him to do. Right. But now he's a nerd and he's like irresponsible. Right. Supposedly because he's like – and a coward because he's running away when the looter shows up. And everybody's giving him a hard time about how irresponsible he is and it's like, hmm. Like, you know, you feel like he just wants to say what he's doing but he can't. He just can't. Um, I, I, I like that he's conflicted. Too, and that we see that he sometimes makes the wrong decision. You know, um, I think that makes a character um, more intriguing and, it, you know, it's easier to um, to connect with them in some ways. Yeah. You know, because if you're if you're perfect and you always make the right decisions, it's like it, it's it's like, well, you, you seem almost like like less. I mean, I don't know, like. Does Superman always make the right decisions? Sometimes yes. it seems like it. So it's yes, like he does. so sometimes it's like harder <laughs> to relate to him, right? For good and bad. Yeah. He does. Right, right. Um I I thought I, this is um I guess when I think about it <laughs> here we go again. Mm. It's the static Spider Man show. Um <laughs> actually I don't know if would Spider Man like static? Oh. 
He's fighting Electro all the time. So when this kid rolls up with electricity powers, he's like, no, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> but um, he's a good guy. So why wouldn't you? Well, like eventually him? he's a yeah. good guy. Well, but well, Spider-Man also uh, yeah. dealt with this with social issues in his comic book as well. Mm-hmm. Eventually mm-hmm. Um, with storylines like, you know, Harry's problem. Yeah. Uh, right. And 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 I, I immediately. Um, in fact, in the first issue in the letters column. Um, Robert Washington uh, mm-hmm. talks about how they're gonna we're gonna get into this stuff. Right. We're gonna cover things in this book. Right. Um, issues that nobody will ever, nobody else will touch. Uh huh. Right. Um, and the first thing he says is school lunches. It's like okay, well, I guess I guess and- you mean like. You know, the, the the issues over people not being able to pay lunches and people providing lunches. But it just sounds like, oh, is there an apple or the, or the square pizza? Oh, that's a good point. I guess I didn't. But yeah, then the next one right. is kids abandoned by crack mothers. So it's like, yeah, there's going to be issues. Yeah, in this there's going to be some dark stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's deceptive because, you know, it opens up and I think they're committed to um, portraying kids um, unvarnished. Kids. Real yeah. kids. <laughs> Right. What happens when kids stop being Virgil and start being static? Yeah. <laughs> and there's some like casual homophobia, like in the first yeah, couple pages, which I don't think necessarily ages super well. But at the same time, like, I mean, I guess it's just like the verbiage used, right? That doesn't necessarily age super well. Like, even it, the... did we talk about it being verbiage? <laughs> Remember when I, yeah, talk, when I, I asked you to get it right? Last I know. Time? <laughs> yeah. Verbiage. It's verbiage. It's not verbiage. Verbiage is 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 diction. Is is you know the way that something is expressed. Verbiage isn't a word. Oh. We named an entire show <laughs> something something verbiage. Oh. Okay, verbiage. Wow, that's going to take me a while. Did you mean but... phraseology? Yeah, right. Like I mean, they they use um, a gay slur. Let me just say, um, and like I think that the characters, even like within the book, are kind of trying to be like. Hey, why are you doing that? Oh, I wasn't doing, you know, this. So it's like they're kind of dealing with it maybe. with the teens a little bit. Maybe. I would say that. But maybe I think, I'm meeting it halfway. I think that we tend to have a knee jerk reaction about portrayal of hate and bad things. I think so too. In this time. Yeah. And I think that that is a, um, an allergic reaction, mm-hmm. um, to use a metaphor, um, because we want to expel it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's important. But I think it's also important to continue to tell these stories yeah. about ignorance being corrected, hopefully. Yes. And this is something else that Washington talks about in his thing is that this is like they are kind of dealing with these issues. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it turns out that there's a character, yeah. uh, Rick, who is himself. He's gay. Right. And this kind of comes to a head at a certain point where he right. has to sort of come out or you know or face – these people who are kind of doing this to him. So right. you have to set that up somehow. Right. And I, but you don't know that reading the first issue of static, you're like, geez, these kids. Are so I know. <laughs> well, and then like one of the later issues, there's some offhanded comment and maybe it would be seen as gentle ribbing at the time, but it was like, like he's a gentle ribbing. Yeah. Right. But like Rick the is, back is kind of... <laughs> but Rick does, he, he does ballet and he's a guy and, and there's some joke in there about like him wearing like pink like unitards or something like that. It's supposed to be just like an offhanded like comment, and he's not even there to say anything. But it, it's just one of those things, like, huh? And it's like, you know, I think at the this is something that was kind of prevalent at the time in the '90s. Like, I think that we're we're maybe starting to deal with. I know it wasn't my school. Yeah. Yeah, it was in my school too, and I, I, I think we're, you know, we're we're starting to deal with, um, you know, how do we talk about uh, people who who are gay? How you know what this is not acceptable, that sort of thing. Um, what do you think of Larry? Oh, Larry is a tough one because he uh, he's hard to wrap your head around. I mean, he's he's very like casual like Virgil is just like like he's like um I you know I need help with like this bully or problem or whatever and like Larry's solution is like here's a gun and I'm like whoa like I yeah. mean it's just kind of like I mean it goes there um but yeah and, yeah and Larry was 
in the in the cartoon, um, Larry is Wade. I mean, he's Larry Wade. I, I think so. Yeah, um, and right. he's a little more kind of drawn as a as just a, a banger, I guess you'd say. Right. Um, in the comic, though, it's like. He's dressed nice. It's not really clear that that's what they were going yeah. for in the and comic. I, and I was like, oh, is he like, you know, his family's got a little more money. Maybe it's from doing gang stuff because he does like sell know. drugs at some point in the comic, you know, and he, okay. he does get into gang stuff. But but it's like not every – what I like about it is like not everybody – I mean, obviously, we're, this is a comic set in an inner city in a school. Right. And you think of, oh, there's like these archetype characters but – or stereotype characters. But, right. But yeah, it's like Larry was a little harder to figure out, a little more nuanced. And, yeah. I, and I like that about the thing because um, – about the thing, about the comic because um, I think all the characters are, are that way. I think so too. And I also, you know, I really liked um, – well, I like uh, Frida. I like that Frida in the comic is Virgil's confidant. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that that was really interesting and yet that they were not a couple, even though Virgil wanted them to be a couple, like very much so. Yeah. And then you find out later that she's been dating Larry this whole time. Yeah. And it's like, neither of you mentioned that to Virgil. And like, you both knew that he was interested. It's like. What are they going to do? I know. I know. But like. Virgil like literally goes to Larry and is like, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna hook up with Frida. Well maybe it's at gonna that point, happen. You go, all right, Virg, come here. <laughs> we gotta talk. And Larry and like, like he admits it like later. He's like, Okay, maybe I should have said something when you came to me. <laughs> but yeah. It's like, what the hell, man? Do you uh, this is for I'd say that the comics for teens. Yeah. And the cartoons for kids. I would agree with that. I think this that is, they um, made it for for younger viewers, yeah. Um, well, oh no, yeah, they definitely, um, simplified it's not as, some of the themes. Yeah, it's not as dark, it's not as adult, yeah. and I think that teens this, deal with adult stuff. When this came out in 93, this is right around the time where people were like, these ain't your daddy's comics, give me that comics code, right. rub, rub, wipe my ass with it. <laughs> and this doesn't run with the comics code, mm-hmm. and that comes out in it, you know, mm-hmm. there's somebody flips somebody off, and there's there's some language, and there's definitely some situations that are like, ooh, boy, this is... This is tough. Yeah. This is a tough situation. I would agree with that. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend it more um, for teens. But uh, there was a lot of – so here's the thing. Let's talk about some of the um, – the, the the my questions. Weird things. The segment. Go for it. Um, there's a lot of um, mentioning of Republican politicians. <laughs> so okay, that went play, right over my head. Sometimes they play name games where it's like, yeah. what are you, Casper the Ghost? Casper, uh, the something else named Casper, and it's like Casper Weinberger. And I'm like, Casper Weinberger, what is that? He was like a secretary of the treasury or something like oh my that. Gosh, okay, because I, I, I know, was like, that went right over my head, and I didn't know if it was, um, was there was a specificity to it or if it was just random, right? Um, because Virgil knows just a lot of facts and things, he does. he's a real smart guy, yeah. Um, or if it was trying to create like an air of, um, you know, a, a government that anti doesn't is, care about, yeah. Um, the, and the kids the are kind of places of, that that they live, right? That they're kind of that they're like kind of like screw screw these guys they don't know what our lives are like sort of thing well just a sort of like oh yeah reaganomics or, or okay, whatever sure. um that would be the kind of thing yeah that uh, you complain about okay i could see that um i don't know it's weird Here's something what else. else do you think it could be okay go ahead no that's all i got oh okay <laughs> um uh, we don't really, at this point in the comic, know exactly what's going on mm. uh, when they all get tear gas With the Big Bang, as they call it. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, and it, apparently it's just like regular cops, like, are tear gassing um, this, mm-hmm. this fight that's going on. Mm-hmm. But then, like, weird robot things show up, and they've got all these, like codes mm. you know they're like we've got to get this guy oh we've got a worker a worker is commuting yeah that's weird yeah what does that mean i don't know but it kind of invokes the idea of um the powers that be and the authorities like experimenting mm-hmm. on uh the disadvantaged and on minorities like they oh, put something yeah. in the yeah. gas yeah. you know yeah. and they yes. want to know what happens when people breathe in and most people die <laughs> but other people get weird powers well, and I think I read they on to, the like, catch these people and and experiment on them. Great. 
I think I read in uh, the on the Wikipedia page that the cops knew there was something in the tear gas, but they didn't know that there was something that would like they thought it would just like track people so they would be able to arrest everyone who was there even if they escaped right they didn't think it would like mutate them right consent right they didn't know that that we can do right 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 apparently the cops were innocent of that bit um but i don't think the cops are innocent (laughs) of irradiating somebody so they can track them better okay that's fair that's a fair point that's not a great thing brutality is an issue that this comic is committed to examining yeah but I want to know who is like actually who 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 else is like tracking them. Yeah, right. Keep exactly. Reading. I've got a weird question for you. Fine. Regarding the comic, well, that's my bit. But fine. Um, and maybe you were getting to this. So there's at one point where uh, Virgil is telling a joke, right? <laughs> and it's like mid joke, and I have it written down. And it says, he cool. says, so the alien soaking wet points at the hydrant and says, no soap, radio. Then Frida says, I don't usually go for ethnic humor, but Cardassian jokes are a whole new frontier. Is this a Star Trek joke? And if so, why don't I get it? It's an absurdist joke from the 50s, which I don't know what that says about Virgil. <laughs> yeah. He's a big really. Steve Gutenberg fan. I don't I don't. Know Is this like a joke that like. One of his parents told him, and well, he thought was like, "Is yeah. this like saying oh, he's he's not cool, oh, but he thinks he's a joke cool?" That his parents taught him, and yeah. it, it, you know, being um, a transparent uh, white boy from the Midwest, uh-huh. um, I guess I don't know reading a book that centers around black characters what you're going to see. Like, I don't know what's what is what what's really on. Like, what's a, a an honest representation? Mm-hmm. Clearly. You know, people of any color can be any way. Uh, of yeah, of, definitely. And so I think it's it's really interesting that like Virgil is kind of like a big nerd that likes He's like Star nerd. Trek and yeah. makes uh, absurdist uh, jokes from the fifties. Yeah, and then it's like the antagonist that comes up and is like. One, two, three, here we go, here we go. I'm going to give you some rap and you're going to eat some snow. Or it's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. And he's the guy who's like trying to beat up on Virgil and Virgil's like, man, just leave me alone. What? Like, why is this guy like this? Right. And I think it, right away it shows you that it's like, this isn't going to be like the kind of thing that you uh, might expect. Yeah, no, I, I think it, it and, and I like that about it. I like that it, it, it kind of takes your expectations and turns them on their head. And so, of course that guy becomes um, Hot Streak, the villain. Yes, Hot Streak, who's just annoying. Do, not a nice guy no, uh, at all. Kind of a zero as a villain, <laughs> at least initially. I mean, yeah. he gets he gets it over on uh, on Static initially mm-hmm. um, when he sort of realizes like who he is and kind of flashbacks to that night. But then, of course, he just goes back and is like, okay, you're a fire guy. Got it. All right. So boop, 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 boop. Okay, I got you. Yeah, right. And then just kind of like um... – I don't – I was like, what is the word? You're not my joker this yeah, time. <laughs> right. Like, we're done here. Moving on. Yeah. Um, and they do kind of um, rapid fire introduce you to a lot of, um, uh, I guess, villains uh, for for Static who – and some of them are, don't seem like they're not going to really be that big of a deal. Like, right? Like, like Tarmac, yeah. like he basically <laughs> – like I was actually a little concerned for Tarmac at one point. I was like, <laughs> like, no, like please, this, Virgil, don't hurt him. Like, like, well, <laughs> like he basically is like, I'm going to make you tar and like flatten you out. And y- you see, he's he's still got body parts, but it's like this was a person. I understand he's a, he's a villain now. Arguably, he's still a person. Yes. So there is that. But like like the the villain um, Holocaust for yeah. int- instance, I get the feeling that he's kind of gonna be come around and come back um, yeah, and maybe yeah. be a, a bigger villain for Static and just the 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 way that he like um, he's very charming, right? Holocaust and yeah. like he presents thing in a, things in a way that you're like, hmm, he's got a good point. Kind of good point. Yeah, you know, it's it's that like deceptive 
seductive idea of like this is you know we talked about the wrestling before this is kind of statics wrestling <laughs> you know what i mean like why couldn't i make money with my powers why couldn't i right. um find respect and acceptance and you know i'm just a kid who goes to school and i don't know if i'm gonna get beat up or what i'm gonna have to deal with today but mm-hmm. why couldn't i like hang with a bunch of like cool superheroes who just kind of take what they want right this is or no it's the um it's the island of uh of having fun and being a donkey and <laughs> pinocchio right <laughs> i'm gonna go smoke cigars with well, all the bad all the right. kids want to smoke cigars in those old merry melodies things yeah apparently i don't know what's going on with cool. that it's yeah pretty cool to smoke cigars yeah all the kids want to do it and uh turn into a donkey yeah <laughs> i know um, are we doing a midsummer thing? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea where that comes from. Yeah. Although there is a fairy. There's a blue fairy. Isn't That's there? true. That's true. Uh, the art in this is great. Yeah. Uh, I was not super familiar with John Paul Leon's work, but it is, um, it's, in my opinion, it's like, the, it, I want to say nineties, but I, that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense necessarily, <laughs> but it reminds me a lot, um, of an art, another artist named, um, Larry Stroman. Okay. Um, and it's sort of, you know, um, it's not just the, the typical, uh, basic lines. It's not the, you know, muscle guys and stuff like that. It's like reaching out and, um, putting more detail in, in the world of the, of the comic, Mm -hmm. um, using, um, uh, light and dark and shadow and, and also and, and and deforming you know making the art more subjective it isn't necessarily about seeing every um oblique muscle and a right. guy um you know stretching the forms and yeah it's just it's just really great it's very kinetic and i think it works really well for this character who is flying around and reaching out and shooting lightning bolts and uh yeah it's, it's neat. i i really liked his I mean, I guess we'll talk about the the cartoon in a minute, but I really like the um the the costume. His costume in the in the comic is different from the cartoon. Yeah, but I I liked that... it evolves in the comic too. Yeah, I think somewhat based on the cartoons. I mean, too. that makes sense. But it really um the initial costume really in the comic really reminds me, and probably on purpose a little bit, a little bit of like 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 Black Panther. It's like a black bodysuit. I mean, you can see his face, though. I guess. Um, and, but the, the gauntlet things, like the the bracers or whatever, it kind of reminds me of. I don't think that they they actually shoot bullets or whatever, but they kind of remind me of Black Widow's like gauntlets. Oh, um, yeah. The, the gold things. The widow's bite. Yeah, which have an electrical attribute. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. So I don't so, know. What are those? Let they... me run something by you real quick. Yeah. Uh, tell me if I've got something here. What What is the thing with black heroes and electricity powers? I don't know. And that does... I, I... Maybe there's a thing and maybe there's not. Uh, because, of course, there's black lightning. Right. And there's storm. That's true. And maybe I don't have something. I mean, three isn't really a trend. Um. Well, I think like black lightning. There, there's like this misconception, you know, right? That they're they're related somehow and they're they're not. And I think it even gets... They even talk about it within the comics, you know, like, oh, and how our powers are different. Oh, when he goes to the DC Universe and meets Black Lightning. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he's like, wait, what? Yeah, right. Should I be suing you? Right. <laughs> and they, like, even, like, talk about I, – hmm, I don't know. There, There's not necessarily, like, oh, these things necessarily specifically huh. go together. Yeah, it's not a thing. Um, But, I mean, and then, like, Storm, it's like she's, like, she's like everything weather-wise, right? Yeah, Thor's not black. No. Not yet. Yeah, there you go. Do something with that, yeah. Marvel. As, so. uh, yeah, let's let Virgil uh, see if he can pick up the hammer. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the cartoon. Um, yeah. and we'll just do it really fast because um, it's not like I don't have anything to say about the cartoon. But, um, you know, I mean, we talked about the comic already. Mm-hmm. Um, I I really like the cartoon. I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Mm-hmm. Not that I thought it was going to be bad, but, you know, aimed somewhere – at a 11 or 12 year old, yeah. or maybe even younger, right? Y7 or whatever the rating is. Um, I thought I wouldn't like it all that much, but it's got, like the comic does and like the character does, a lot of character, mm-hmm. which I really liked. I also liked them sort of upping Rick Stone to, um, you know, being like the sidekick, yeah, which I, he right. does kind of later on in the in the comic, I think, but just sort of promoting him immediately. Yeah. And then I also kind of liked um, making 
um, Frida, you know, more of a series regular or Mm co-star rather than her starting off being the romantic interest and then the thing that kind of sends uh, Virgil out to in the arms of Holocaust, you know, because of romantic disappointment. Instead, you know, in the cartoon early on, she's just like, well, I kind of like Frida, but then we just put that in the back pocket because – right. He well, has a crush on her, stuff to do. but but it's not the most important thing in yeah. the world. Um, I like the 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 costume in the uh, in the cartoon too. I especially um, like the the jacket with the hood. I think that's really cool. Um, it just it looks cool. Um, something that I like in both the 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 comic and and the cartoon. Um, I like that he's. And we talked about this a little bit, that he's resourceful. I like that he starts out using a manhole cover to fly around on. I kind of wish he continued using it because I think it's cool and creative. But, you know, it gets – they either he builds or Rick builds, like, something for him. And I guess that just maybe makes more sense. You should put, like um... – quarters in his pockets or something i don't know he rides like a <laughs> in the comic he rides like a broken trash like a bent trash can that's at one what point, i like about it he's, got. he's creative but yeah. you should put um i don't know where like uh, metal armbands and metal um the shin key. guards or something and maybe he could like like fly around like that that's not a bad idea you know um yeah, it's uh, you know, it's basically the same story. It's a little more simplified. It's a little streamlined. I thought it was interesting that um, you know, initially in the comic, we don't see his dad a lot, right? Um, in the in the home, and then in the in the cartoon, there it's just his dad because his mom has been uh, a victim of uh, of gang violence. I know, which is like that's a heavy thing to put it's on very a heavy. kids' cartoon to start off with. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I understand why that's there because it's like, well, then we can. It, it, it's a way for it's it's something personal for 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 Virgil, you know, to kind of be like, well, do I really, you know, I don't really want to be a part of a gang because of what happened to my mom, yeah, and that that sort of thing, yeah. Um, but it it is kind. Of, it's like I liked that, like at least in the comic, you know, every his parents are both there, even though, like you said, we don't really see his dad. But, um, I mean, and his sister's just annoying in, in both, but, but she's a sister, you know? Um, I, I like the theme song a lot. I think it gets you, it's very 90s, but it gets you pumped up and, like, ready for the show. Yeah, all, that's true of, you know, all the DC Warner Bros. Yeah. cartoons. Yeah. They do a good job of... I get, he's almost overpowered. Like his powers could do a lot of things, yeah. but I think that's kind of in the character that he's it's he's a really powerful character, and a lot of times characters are, especially when they're inexperienced with their powers, are constrained by their lack of imagination or their lack of experience. Mm-hmm. And so he does all these like, you know, he listens to a CD without a CD player, or he uh, yes. pranks his sister, and it's like yeah. he's he's screwing around when he could be doing these. He could be powering the city, you know. He could be doing all these amazing That's true. things, right? Um, but I mean, he's just a kid. He is just a kid, and he's figuring this out. Um, and then in the cartoon, like Rick knows his secret identity, and he yeah. instead of Frida, yeah, yeah, uh, and you know takes on that confidant role, and um. So it's 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 fun like seeing that in 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 both mediums like them knowing that and then them playing off of it and pretending like they don't know and that sort of thing. Um and um uh, the something that struck me about the I think it's like the third episode with um the the um antagonist destruct. Mm-hmm. Um so he he was a, a bang baby, and like we're we're kind of learning more. So the, the big bang happens, and then everybody who's affected by it becomes a metahuman as a bang baby, and um, people are affected by this at like different rates, right? And he turns into this this guy who just like destroys stuff, and he he doesn't he's kind of like big and square, and he doesn't look human anymore, unlike um, Virgil. And so he kind of feels ashamed by it, and he feels like he can't live his normal life anymore, so he joins up with the villains. But I really like – I like this story a lot because Virgil goes and talks to him and convinces him. Yeah. You know, (laughs) no, you can – you know, you can live – you know, your mom misses you. She will still love you. You know, it's important. But – 
Yeah, he could have just like you know rolled him over the, with a uh, steamroller. Like yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like it, it just it shows like like Virgil, even even though he he's a teen, he's thinking of other people and he's um trying to reach out and you know he's he's trying to be a good guy, um and. But then at the end of the, the episode, it's like he's reunited with his mom, but he's like going to do – he's volunteered to do medical testing. And it's like – it's like this really weird kind of like bittersweet like, whoa, what? Yeah, well – Like that's depressing. I mean he can't <laughs> – he can't go back to school. But why or maybe not? he could. I don't know. Like maybe if this would be made today, maybe it would be like you would see uh, Bang Babies going to school – yeah. You know, and there there would just be we'll different meta humans walk, we'll walking around. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And they, they do show in the episode that he has like a spasm. He's sort of able to transform back, but not quite. So he can't quite control it. Yeah. yeah. But there's four seasons left. That's true. Um, you know, we could go talk about this all night, but uh would you recommend this? Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um I I think that static is a really cool um character and um i want to see where his story goes yeah i would too um and it it's tough to i don't know it's tough to kind of look back at this Mm -hmm. i definitely want to read um static all the way through the milestone stuff and then see where we go with the um, dc stuff but it's hard for me to go back to 90s comics sometimes yeah (laughs) because i don't know there's a certain um or your mileage may vary, but there's a certain kind of feel that they have that, I don't know, it puts me in a headspace that sometimes I want to be there and sometimes not. Because you remember what it was like, maybe? Um, yeah, in maybe the 90s? I'm not communicating it totally well. They have a, you know, it's, we laugh about like yogurt commercials and like uh, being extreme and fruit based uh, confectionery. Yeah, right. But, um, and this doesn't have that a ton, but there's no. a certain kind of like, voice or tone that like 90s comics have that sometimes works and and sometimes doesn't yeah things do get pretty extreme sometimes sometimes they do yes to the max um there was okay so there was one there was one thing that happened there was one line that really kind of was i was like whoa what like uh so like frida was like virgil was like hey do you want some snacks and she was like oh no i'm on a diet i'm like okay whatever that's very 90s but then she said something about her butt being bigger than a buick or something like that and then he is like oh you think i would have noticed because i've been trying to look up your skirt all morning (laughs) hey look the kids this is how kids talk i was like excuse me <laughs> and she's just like oh grow up i'll see you in class no 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 no. i don't know any girl who would react that way this is the flirtatious banter that they've got yeah remember when superman was like i'm trying to look up that skirt of yours lois well, maybe he's trying to with his x-ray vision but he doesn't tell lois <laughs> no, about it no you made it worse <laughs> that's way worse okay all right well, I'm just saying, I can't believe she's, like, laughing about that <laughs> and is, like, okay with it. And then, like, after that, he's, like, to, to – Virgil's, like, to Larry, hey, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna make it with Frida. It's going to happen because uh, we got this, this friendly banter going back and forth. Yeah. This, is how, this is how boys talk. Uh, this is locker room talk. It, it is locker Let's room talk. Let's not get talk. into that. But All anyway right. – uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, double recommend, quadruple recommend, because I'd recommend the show, too, as well. I would, if you've too. got HBO Max, you can check that out. Yes. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. I also wanted to mention, you know, while we're talking about Dwayne and his work and his legacy, I wanted to mention that every year since uh, 2015, I think, around this time, um, the Dwayne McDuffie Foundation gives out the uh, Dwayne McDuffie Award. It's a lot of Dwayne McDuffie. Uh, the Dwayne <laughs> McDuffie Award for Diversity in Comics yes. um, to minority creators uh, and different works. And this year, uh, the recipient of the award was um, the graphic novel or oh, graphic story. Yeah. Uh, they called us Enemy, which is uh, by George Takei. It's mm-hmm. about his uh, time, his experiences, based on his experiences in an internment camp. And George collaborated with uh, writer Justin Isinger and Stephen Scott and artist Harmony Becker mm-hmm. to bring it to life. Yeah. I think it's really great that this book uh, won 
I, I think this is something that maybe we don't recognize a whole lot in a, in American history. Um, and I think it's interesting that his his story is being told through uh, through this medium as well. Yeah. Um, and not only George's story, but also the stories and the voices of other minority creators right. uh, who are all nominated for the award. Um, so you can check that out. Um, I would suggest going to the Dwayne McDuffie page on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is maintained uh, and organized by uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Fullerton, Mm -hmm. uh, Dwayne's widow, uh, who is also um, behind the Dwayne McDuffie Foundation. And to that end, there is a GoFundMe. If you go to GoFundMe and search for the Dwayne McDuffie Fund, that Mm -hmm. is a fund that she is raising to establish the foundation. And it'll be a nonprofit organization for awarding academic scholarships to diverse students. Which is really cool. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of money behind this. Mm -hmm. And so put your money behind it, too, by going to GoFundMe and searching for the Dwayne McDuffie Fund. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have any questions, you can always ask us on social media. and We'll point you in the right direction. Or like I said, you can search for the Dwayne McDuffie page on Facebook. Yeah, both both ways work. And we need to talk about it more because – these two white kids have barely been able to get through this. Like, we don't know how to talk about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we need to learn to talk about this, how to talk about this stuff until it's not something we need to talk about anymore. <laughs> yeah, We've got right. a long, long road. And I don't know if we're going to see the end of it. But, you know, we've, we've, we've got to talk about this stuff more. We've got to become more aware of this stuff. And then... Uh, we don't. It's not. Won't be tough for us to talk about. <laughs> right. Like it's almost impossible for us to get out. It's not. Yeah. Um, I wanted to also mention the fact that you know this isn't the end of the road for Milestone. No. You know, DC is already has uh, more Milestone stories in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the Milestone Returns number zero, which is sort of the you know Advent number zero comic for right. uh, for the whole Earth M. Uh, sort of line. Um, And to that end, there are other comics coming out, which are all going to be available digitally. And I think a lot of them will be available um, physically as well. Sure. Right. But if you go to DC uh, Universe Online, you can get kind of plugged in to when some of these things are going to come out. Um, You know, there's going to be a static miniseries. That's really Digitally. um, An Icon and Rocket book, um, a hardware book. Uh, this is all coming out in the future. And, you know, if you want to read, like, the original first issues of Static, Icon, and Hardware, mm-hmm. uh, those are available for free on DC Universe Infinite. That's if really cool. If you log in and uh, register, you can see those for free and get a taste of what we're talking about here. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And it gives you, like you said, gives you a little taste and then you, uh, you're you like, yep, like that, buy the next issue. So yep. um, I think that's cool. Yeah. Some of the, they have the designs up too. Mm-hmm. And some of these designs are really cool. They've given Static a, I think I'd call it like a, more modern look. Sure, yeah. Kind of an update. I kind of miss some of the old, uh, like the B-Boy look. But, sure. Uh, but this is uh, more streamlined and kind of cool looking. And he's got a face mask. And uh, Really? That's important in this day and age. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. The bad guy doesn't have one. And that tells you everything you need to know <laughs> about the bad guy. It certainly does. So, yeah, uh, check this stuff out and uh, go check out the uh, GoFundMe for the Dwayne McDuffie Fund, Milestone Forever. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this week. Um, what are you going to do with your free time now? <laughs> All my no soap co- co- radio. Co- yeah, because <laughs> that was the setup for a punchline. <laughs> What time? I was going to say, what free time? No, you're going to go prepare some more good Just Enough Trope content right. for our next show. That's and for right. other shows on the Just Enough Trope Network, which you can find on our social medias, on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the what's uh, uh, the, the snappy... The Facebooks. Snappy Rush. The, the, the Flip the, Traps. The, the, the Zippity Doos. <laughs> Uh, this is an old bit. Yeah, it is. This bit in a while. We were trying it out. Uh, you can find us at Just Enough Trope, all one word on all of those platforms. We also have a Discord where we like to talk with the fans, with the listeners, and with comic fans and movie and TV fans about what's going on in those worlds. Let us know. And, uh, okay, 
I'm going to say, tell us your final, final fantasy. That's an FF. You're <laughs> mix, we're mashing up final fantasy and fantastic four. Oh. And uh, tell us uh, who's going to be who. Uh, there is, you go. Is Cla- cloud. There, we got our Sue Storm. <laughs> it's got Storm. <laughs> blonde cloud, hair. Blonde yeah. hair. There you go. Little Perfect. spiky. Perfect. Yeah. But yeah, let us know who you think should play the first family of Marvel Comics on our Discord. And also, if you are listening to the show and you're not subscribed, why not? Go to your subscription service, your your uh, RSS feeder, your listening platform of choice, and subscribe to the show so you get it right away. Yes. And while you're there, give us a rating and review, if you would, because that really helps us out. And it lets the real people in charge, the mm-hmm. computers, <laughs> lets them know that we're doing a good job. Uh, so give us a review and give us a rating. Give us five trash can lids. There you go. So we can fly right out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess if you're... You know, got a trash can lid banging around on your hip. Uh, you're not too secret. It's yeah. too silent. Yeah. Stay in the air. That's probably why the redesign in the comic, because it's like a foldable, like metal yeah. circular well, thing. Well, I know he's like, his whole thing is like, he's really good. And then he becomes like gear later. So he's like really good at like making things. But right. these kids have a lot of know-how. <laughs> yeah. How's this kid make this collapsing disc? How does he make his costume? Yeah. They see we see him at a oh, sewing yeah, machine. His, I'm true. like, yeah. what? Okay. He, yeah, he, I, I worked out and I sewed. Yeah, I got an A <laughs> in home ec. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, my mom didn't come in while I was like making my costume and like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> but even so, it's less complicated than uh, Toby McGuire somehow uh, hot gluing like an entire web pattern all over his. <laughs> his well, costume. that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Three years later, I was ready to debut as <laughs> Spider-Man. Uh, so give us uh, five stars. We'd appreciate that. Yes. We'll be back next week to talk about something else. And until then, we're signing off. I'm your host, Caliban. I'm your co-host, Mikan Hana. Keep the geek fires burning. Yeah.